Is Charlotte Mason only for the younger students? Welcome to the Simply Charlotte Mason podcast. I'm Sonia Schaefer. Sometimes we hear people say, well, I'll do Charlotte Mason with my younger kids, but it's not rigorous enough for my older ones. Or they won't say it's not rigorous enough, they just won't use it for their older ones. They think it's only for younger children. We want to address that question today. And joining me is Amber O'Neill Johnston. Good to have you back, Amber. Yes, thanks for letting me be here. Let's talk about this concept of Charlotte Mason for the younger children, but not for the older children. Yes. This is something I have gotten feedback on so many times. And as I inch closer and closer, um, I have a teenager now, and she's been you know, educated this way from the beginning. And I get a lot of questions about, oh, you're not going to start you know, real school or real lessons with wow. her now that she's in middle school and becoming a teenager, has become a teenager. And I think that there are a lot of myths surrounding um, the rigor or the intensity of a Charlotte Mason education. And that's you know, something that I, I wish to talk to people about more. Yes. Now, those of us who have studied Charlotte Mason, it blows our minds mm-hmm. what she required of the older students. Yes. So if you're studying it, you don't have that misconception. No. Um, I mean, she was asking them, I was just looking over some of the exam questions that they had for the 12 year olds. Yes. And it was, you know, draw a map of this particular area and describe it. And um, it had exam questions in three different languages plus Latin, that would be the fourth language. (laughs) And, and they weren't easy exam questions either. It was no. just astounding to me what the older children studied. I agree. And I think it's really telling that I mean, my children love exam week. And so despite the um, kind of difficult nature of some of the questions, because it gives them an opportunity to show what they know yes. rather than kind of gotcha on that one thing you don't remember. Exactly. You know, not giving you a chance to tell me all that you do know and remember. Um, I think there's just a sense of excitement that the students have to share. So it's not that exam week is easy and therefore this is great for little kids but not older students. No, in, in fact, there's nothing to hide behind. There's no multiple choice questions. There's nothing you can guess. Mm-hmm. Um, you are going to know and be able to share and tell, or or you wouldn't know. And you can't cram for it. No, you can't cram for it. No you way. can't study for it. Yeah. And so I think that, if anything, this is more difficult than what most of us grew up with or what we're mm-hmm. accustomed to. But um, I think that the demeanor of the students in a, that are being educated with Charlotte Mason's philosophy can sometimes lead us to believe that they aren't engaging in deep learning. Um, sometimes I look at it and say, because they're happy. There's a level of peace um, as they go about their studies. They're typically engaged, highly engaged, a lot of discussions, beautiful writing, and that That's, doesn't look like my high school no, experience. No, <laughs> and I think about myself, you know, it's like stacked up with all these AP classes, as many extracurricular yeah. activities as you could possibly fit, mm-hmm. staying up all night, cramming and studying, trying to get as many things to fit into your day as possible. And I felt like a lot of like white knuckle moments. Yes. And, you know, kind of nodding off and feeling exhausted, but that I had to do all the things all the time and do them really well. And so if that's what we're looking for from our Charlotte Mason teens, we're not going to see that. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes that's what we're mistaking, that that franticness, the Mm -hmm. difficultness, the the difficulty, the stressfulness, and we are calling that rigor, and we'd like to see that in a Charlotte Mason education. And I have to sit back and think, do I really want to see that? And no, I don't. That's Mm -hmm. not the life that I wish for my children, but that doesn't mean that they aren't engaging deeply. The students in my home, you know, my children, they're already reading material far beyond things that I engaged with even through college and able to discuss things. And because I did cram, I wasn't, I'm not able to discuss much of what I studied or learned. Well, what's interesting is when we're talking about stress and pressure and what that looks like, so many studies have been done that when the brain gets under stress, it tends to shut down rather than actually 
work the yes. way it's supposed to. Yeah. So of course, yeah, we are not going to remember those things and be able to discuss them freely. The difference between information and knowledge. Sure. Being able to work with knowledge is being able to work with that material with freedom. Yes. To condense it, to illustrate it, to rephrase it. And that's what we want for our children. So we really do need to take that pressure off. They're in a better place without the pressure because their brains are going to work yes. more freely. And speaking of brains working freely, I think that that is part of what we see when we talk about kind of some of the delight in this type of a education. They are doing lots of different things with their brains. So they're not just going from one class to the next class to the next class asking with us asking them to exhibit the same skills and yeah. the same level of um, attention to the same type of material, like whether it be a lecture or just write and then go write and then go write some more. But they are singing folk songs and hymns and reciting poetry and Bible verses and creating art, studying art, listening to music. And those enrichments are an important part of the of their education. And so when you are doing math and you're giving your full attention to that and then you're singing a hymn, and then you are studying a historical time period and historical fiction or a biography and then using watercolors and painting. You know, these are things that make your day flow and your week flow that may appear like, oh, they're not really working all that hard. Mm -hmm. But I think that we're working very effectively is working, what we're doing. Yeah, working smart. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So one of the misconceptions that people, where they might get the misconception that CM is not rigorous, is from the low stress level, yes. let's put it that way, that our children have. And then let's talk about those enrichments as well. I think sometimes when people who have not studied Charlotte Mason very deeply, when they think of CM, that's pretty much all they think about is the, the enrichments. Yes. So, yes, we're still giving those to our children, so maybe they're just zeroing in on that aspect of it. And I think? think that could very well be, and, and perhaps that's fair, because I know as a Charlotte Mason mom, when I'm with my other CM mom friends, we do spend a lot of our time talking about enrichments. That's what we share about on social media, and we chat about and write about. And I think that a part of it is, one, because they are delightful, mm -hmm. and they bring a lot of joy to us as well as our children. But I also think it's because those are the things that are part of what make this education so different than what we all experienced. So we have a higher learning curve a lot of times with incorporating those things and spreading the feast as we always like to talk about. And so we talk about the things that are getting a lot of our attention, but that doesn't mean that the core academic subjects that people consider to be traditional, more traditional, um, aren't being done. They absolutely are. And we just don't probably just don't talk we about don't them as We don't fuse about algebra. Exactly. You know? It's like, that's a taken for granted almost. It's a given. Yeah, yes. in our heads. Just because, as you said, the enrichments are new to us. Right. So that's what we tend to discuss more like, hey, which artist are you doing? And which composer are, are you happy with now? And, and things like that. That is what tends to bubble to the top. Yes, and I think there's a level of creativity around the enrichments mm -hmm. too. So we are kind of swapping notes and wondering where have you heard this and how have you come to this? And and so I think that um, I can see why some people may think that that's, that's what they do. They run and frolic in creeks <laughs> and, and read poetry all day. Yeah, and yeah. Um, if that's all we did, it would not be rigorous. No, it Absolutely. wouldn't. Absolutely. And so I think that um, that's why we're here talking about this today, to kind of dispel that myth that we are doing so much more than that. And that for older students, if anything, um, Charlotte, Charlotte Mason's um, kind of programs were very progressive. So each at each level, the child got exactly what they needed for where they were at that time, and it was such a good match, right? So yeah. you don't see the tension and the stress of like overreaching or the boredom of not being um, kind of fulfilled with you know good ideas and and thoughts and things to interact with. And so with that progression, it continues on through middle school and into the high school years. And uh, it never stops. And, and I actually am impressed. I used to feel intimidated, but now that 
I have older students, rather than feel intimidated about what they're working on, I'm impressed and really enjoy engaging with them on some of these pursuits and their readings. When we first started out with CM, I don't know about you, but when I thought of high school, it was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> but as you said, it is so progressive, and we are learning along with our children yes. that when you get to middle school, it's like, oh, well, we're just doing one more step yes. from where we've been. And this isn't so bad, you know, we'll just keep going. And then you get to high school, and it's like, oh, well, it's just one more step. Yes. It, so it's not intimidating to us as we go along with our children. And it's true, and you're ready for it. Your yes. children are ready, and you're ready. It's almost you, you tend to hunger for that next step, that next revelation of you know, what will this next year reveal to us in terms of what we'll be learning and talking about. And it, it's exciting. And I think you know, there's a, a role in that too. I think that in our society, we're not necessarily used to people speaking so enthusiastically about education and lessons. And we do tend to be enthusiastic and excited about what we're learning. And that's a very positive thing, but I think sometimes it can scare people that if they are speaking mm. this positively and this enthusiastically, it must be because it's easy. And I think that that is, you know, some uh, an area where we could all grow as we shift our understanding that a life full of ideas is exciting and sometimes being stretched uh, feels good. Yes. As long as they're not stretched, you know, like yes, on a, on a rack, you know? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. And, and that's what when we talk about, it's just the next step. Yes. It can, it can be misinterpreted that we're saying we're taking baby steps. Mm. And so we never get past this level, mm. you know? Yes. So what we're calling high school really isn't that hard because we've just yeah. been taking these little baby steps. You see what I'm yes. saying? Oh, yes. Where when we talk about taking the next step, um, it's, it is, as you said, challenging and fulfilling at the yes. same time because it is causing us to grow mm -hmm. in so many different areas and, and stretch, mm -hmm. as you said, yeah. And I think the proof is in the pudding, too. So anyone that's been had, had the pleasure of being at a conference, perhaps, or somewhere where there's a gathering of Charlotte Mason teens, you can just sit back and watch and listen. And I think any fear that you may have will just kind of dissipate. And I know that happened to me early on. And I was at an event and the teens had tables set up where they were sharing different things they were working on throughout the school year. And it was varied. Some of them were artistic pursuits. Some of them had laptops open showing the businesses that they had created. And some had collections of things that they you know, were pulling arrowheads and different things that they were collecting. And I was fascinated. I was fascinated by the varied degree of passions that the children had developed. I was fascinated by the degree of just how good everything was, you know? And I, I, I was thinking, my goodness, these are young people, but they are presenting with their passions and the things that they've studied deeply and have engaged with. They are presenting them like you would expect a professional uh, to to present um, in that way, so I think that that's that another... might be because they've been narrating. For yes, it could years. be, <laughs> and it worked. But I think that was the single most um, that that let me relax. I felt mm. like my sigh, my shoulders go down because I got a glimpse of the future, and I said, okay. I see where this is headed, and it looks so different than anything that that I've ever seen before. That there's a, it's an understandable that there could be some fear, and perhaps that's another argument for community, mm. being able to walk this journey with other people at different stages, so that we can kind of be there for each other to say it's okay, and give you a glimpse of what's coming next. As you said, it looks different, and with. That might be also what can uh, contributes to a misconception is we don't have all of the multiple choice tests. We don't have all of the textbooks. Yes. We don't have the backpack, you know, yes. whatever it yes. is. But instead, we have, we're looking at pictures, mm. you know, we're reciting poetry. Yes. <laughs> so talk a little bit about how we can encourage non-Charlotte Mason people or 
those who are new to Charlotte Mason and and have this idea of well that's okay for the little kids mm -hmm. but you know how can aside from saying here come sit in my home sure. and listen to my older kid we don't want to put our kids on the spot yeah, right and, and that never don't goes appreciate well. <laughs> that at all so what are some ways that we might be able to come alongside in community mm -hmm. and encourage the younger moms encourage the not as familiar with Charlotte Mason moms mm -hmm. that as you said, it's going to be okay. Yes. It's all going to, even though it looks different. I think one thing, of course, and I know a lot of new moms get tired of hearing us say this, but studying the volumes will do wonders because that is where you really get a vision for the full progression. And you, the, the further on you get, you um, may see less people. You may hear from less people out in the the public on social media or wherever you're listening, you'll hear from a lot of people with little kids and maybe a little bit less and a little bit less. That doesn't necessarily mean they're not there, but I find that sometimes they have pulled back a little bit necessarily from, from being out in the, in the center and talking about it all the time. But in the volumes, you can see just how these teens are spending their time and you see this progressive, uh, um, independence. You, that's mm -hmm. another thing. At younger years, it, some people feel like Charlotte Mason, the mom, is so intense and she's right there on every move. And there you, you are, you're building this foundation, but the, the teens become very independent. Self-education is the yes, goal. Yes, and, right. and you see that almost almost to perfection, uh, you know, and, and you see it, what she talks about and how she describes that in her volumes. So I think reading the volumes is number one. I think joining a group is very, very helpful because if you're just out here trying to make all these connections on your own, sometimes that can be very difficult. But in a group, you'll see the seasons of education from other families. And the beautiful thing about it is that as you're learning from the families around you, there's someone else watching you. And even if you think you have nothing to give, you're brand new, there is someone who can learn from where your child is or where you are and maybe even just learn from your questions that they hadn't thought to ask. So I think those are a couple of things. And I think the last one would be don't skip the enrichments. So they're in that fear. Sometimes I see people, you know, kind of clapping down and they're like, okay, mm -hmm. I got to really do this. I got to do all the real stuff. And we're just only going to do math, history, science, and, and grammar. Just get ready for the ACT yes. or the SAT. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want to really discourage that. And not mm -hmm. only for the sanctity of the Charlotte Mason education, but that she didn't make any of this up just to be flowery or just to be impressive or sound good. It all really does work together. And what I see, I see the elements of the poetry playing out in the written narrations that are also bringing in grammar. I see the stories um, from the historical fiction interacting with the geography that they're talking mm -hmm. about and really understanding where this time and place, what was happening in this time and place, and geography models being informed by biographies that they've read. And it's like a web. And so as hard as it may be, because it is so different than what most of us have, I would encourage all moms to give every bit of it a try and just allow it your child to marinate. You might not see all of this come together right away, but as they get older, you sit back and you listen to them and you read what they're writing and you're like, oh, <laughs> this is it. Now I get it. Yes. Good word. Good word. Thank you. You're welcome. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe through iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. You can also subscribe to the audio version or read the blog post on our website at simplycharlottemason.com. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.